Hey guys, we've recently covered Intel 12 Gen release and it's clearly competitive with AMD's best offering. In many cases, even better. Intel CPUs historically have had great overclocking potential to push way past the stock performance. So we set out on a journey to test it and see if it's worth overclocking. In the interest of providing the best value to you and saving your time, we're not going to beat around the bushes and tell you as it is. Should you overclock 12 gen Intel CPUs? In general, no, but there's performance to be gained. So if you're interested to get the insight into overclocking potential, stay with me as we go over it. Let me give you a brief into our system setup. We're using top of the line Intel i9-12900K CPU, running on Asus Maximus Z690 Hero motherboard with Gale DDR5 memory. We'll be running the memory at different speeds and show you the overclocking settings shortly. Both cooler and GPU are the same across the systems. As far as AMD and last gen Intel systems are concerned, those were covered in our main CPU review. You can check it out in this card up here and the link is also in the description below. In this video, we'll be using five different setting configurations for this 12900K. Stock, then two simple memory overclocks, 4800 and 5200 mega transfers respectively, and finishing up with two memory and CPU overclocks. One with auto C within Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, which boosts CPU clocks up by 100 megahertz, and the other being manual OC. With 12 gen, Intel has implemented hybrid core design. Now there are performance cores called P cores and efficiency cores called E cores. This makes overclocking slightly different from the usual, but with the help from Intel's overclocking utility, it's pretty quick and we can tweak all the settings very nicely. For our complete manual overclock, we've gone with P cores at 5.2 GHz, E cores at 4.1 GHz, and voltage offsets of negative 0.05 volts. As you may see, we didn't really focus on efficiency here, rather just trying to squeeze every bit of performance out of this chip. With this in mind, let's check out the results, starting with some gaming benchmarks. First up is Horizon Zero Dawn, and here we see that the spread between all of these setups is pretty small. From stock to leading OC, there's only about 5% difference. Next up is Shadow of a Tomb Raider, and here Intel 12900K with stock settings has lower average FPS than AMD's counterpart. Simply overclocking the memory improves the performance by about 6%, and we see better improvement from faster memory and CPU overclocking. The total improvement here is up to 12%, which is pretty good. Take note of that for later on. Lastly, we have Doom Eternal. And here, just like in Horizon Zero Dawn, there's only about 5% improvement from stock to manual overclocking. But this is not the whole story on all of these games. If we switch over to the power efficiency across all of these games, the results are very different. In our main review of the next-gen CPUs from Intel, we found that they are really power efficient when it comes down to gaming, as compared to both AMD and last generation Intel CPUs. Naturally, overclocking changes this, with exception to RAM overclocking, as it has reasonably low impact on power consumption, but it has great impact on performance. For example, in Doom Eternal, from overclocking the RAM, we gain between 1 and 4% improvement on FPS per 10 watts, but the moment we overclock the CPU, our efficiency goes down by 15% as compared to stock. In Horizon Zero Dawn, overclocking RAM netted no difference in performance, but overclocking the CPU reduced power efficiency by 18%, which is equivalent to shooting yourself in the foot. I probably would avoid it. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, if you remember earlier, there was a considerable improvement from both RAM and CPU overclocking, and it shows on power efficiency too. At the top of the table, we see RAM OC at 4,800 mega transfers with 29% improvement on FPS per 10 watts. The moment we overclock the CPU, our efficiency drops from stock by 12 to 14%. But if we compare between manual CPU overclock and memory overclock, then the difference is a whopping 50%. Not sure if it's worth doing at all, but let's move on to productivity. And if you're finding our work useful and want to support us, please consider subscribing. The first benchmark is Cinebench R23. And here we find the best single core score is with memory OC, but the difference between the results is very minimal. When it comes to multi-core performance, this is naturally best with both types of overclock, even though it's just a few percent improvement. Next up is V-Ray, and here AMD still has a solid lead with a fully overclocked Intel chip lagging behind. Just like in most of the tests, the difference between all the settings is very minimal. Last test here is Blender, and it gives basically the same old results. Slight improvement for manual OC on both RAM and CPU, but nothing too crazy. We've also analyzed the data further while running the longer Barcelona test and found that the, while auto OC is enabled, the CPU is always staying above 90 degrees Celsius in a room with ambient temperature of 28 degrees. However, with the manual overclock, it immediately hits 100 degrees and stays there. You can see little dips where the CPU is actually thermal throttling and clocking itself down. 
If we look at the power efficiency, the story is even more disappointing. Under full load, the manually overclocked 12900K is pulling 270 watts at the beginning before hitting thermal limits, then dropping down to low 260s. It's exactly double of what AMD's Ryzen 5950X is pulling, so there's clearly a long way before these chips become competitive in productivity. Which brings us well to the statement I've mentioned at the beginning of this video. Why do I think it's not worth overclocking the CPU? It is clear that Intel has already optimized its performance and built that into their boosting algorithms. There is maybe 5% more performance to push at the expense of thermals and power. However, I'd say it's not worth for almost anyone. It's fun to go and set some high scores in Cinebench against AMD fanboys, but that's about it. If you're looking for more performance, then I would recommend looking at getting fast as possible memory with lowest possible latency, as this will have the most impact on performance without heating up your house for no reason. By the way, if you want to check out any of the items covered in this video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.